Well, so far so good on that. Now, gotta go find some birch bark. I know right where it's at. If it can be, well, of course it can be gotten out of there. Got a whole lot of birch bark that is extra overflow. It's an unusual thing. Never have enough birch bark. That's what that mound is. Oh, that's fine. We can't get that fire going with this, then. Something, something wrong with Chuck's method. Yeah. Why don't I think to bring a bucket with me? There's about 10 inches of snow on the ground, maybe 12. Thank goodness there's not 24 inches. All right, Suki, oh, there she is, she's coming. She's coming, she's coming. Now I need a bucket, some new gloves, warm gloves, and the shovel. That went surprisingly well, actually. It's snow blowing that path. Much easier walking. Should have taken that out of there. That's the four by six like that one. I thought there was one down here. This is good. I'm thinking about all the time I worked down here, September, October. I think October was about the end of it. But getting this all cleared out and put in a pile, thinking about this fire eventually, way off in the future. And then this big pile. Uh, and these sections. Oh man. And then all of that over there. Be amazing. Well, maybe we can get this all burned up today. You know, I should take that snow off of that thing. Heavy bastard, come on. You can stay right there. God, I think about how many hours I've worked down here. And what a transformation from four months ago till now.
I, when I began working, it was August. Sweating in the hot sun, oh man. Down in here, well, Jesus, anywhere. Beginning here, this is a little hump. This is where I, I would mow up to here. Did you even use birch bark? Yeah. Huh. I think that whole thing is going to go fast. Yeah. All that little stuff. Well, now you the wind coming out of that side. Good way. Wow. been laying there watching me. I, I was sitting on the step stool or the footstool. Got up and put my hand up there. Clunked my shoes on the floor and she raised up and looked at me like, oh, I know that. I know that sound. So since I did that, now I'm committed to having to go outside in the sun. I know, have you had enough of that? I think she's thinking maybe there's no hope. Oh, there she comes. Okay. better. Well, that pile is lower. that pile. Good. I want to get that out of there by, well, in the spring. Bring the chainsaw down and cut that up into a couple sections and get it in the fire. Same with the one just beyond Suki there. This is Tuesday. I guess by Thursday afternoon, that's when the new system is coming in to bring us Sub-Zero. Well, let's see how far we can get. 
It is windy. I don't know if you can hear the wind. Suki's down here watching me like I've got a madman in the house. She's thinking. Good morning. Good morning. We are just entered our fourth week of an Arctic siege. Well, third week. It's miserable. Well, second week. Um, first week. All right, five days maybe. But it's been awful, so it's I can say whatever I want. We hit 28 below three nights ago. Got up at four, came out, looked at the temperature gauge for outside. It was 24 below. Oh, it's, it's not so bad. Half an hour later, I looked 28 below, which is common, which is what it does around here, northern Minnesota, or anywhere, I guess. Uh, four o'clock in the morning is not when it's going to be the coldest. It's usually right about around dawn. Temperature just keeps going down and down and down until you're going to scream. Well, it's, it was 28 below. Okay. I've looked at the week or 10 days future from now, today, here and now. We're going to be a low of 33 below coming up five or six days from now. That could change. That could very easily change. 42 below, which we had two winters ago. Oh my God, I've never, I've never known 42 below, much less 40 below. We've gotten by and I had forgotten what winter in northern Minnesota can really be like because last winter we got a lot of s snow late November into December and then it stopped the rest of the winter. We didn't have, have much cold at all, just like we haven't had much cold at all this year. Going into late November, December, January, we were getting by with very moderate temperatures for us in the winter. Lows in the low 20s, highs in the upper 20s. Every day was pretty much the same. Oh. That's what it's like to live in northern Minnesota in January and February. And then look out. <laughs> they began warning us. <sighs> so, oh, the house is cracking and booming, sniveling like I haven't heard it for months, years, actually. Laying down in the afternoon, trying to, trying to read. Suki and me on the bed. Boom! Thud! <laughs> well, I think I've told you I've taken to wearing <clears throat> noise-canceling headphones to take a nap. Oh, I've, I've been bringing in, I think a week or two weeks ago in one of, one of the episodes I talked about, well, when it gets colder in January or February, I'll be burning three buckets of wood a day. Not the two that I'm used to burning. Oh my God, I'm up to at least four buckets a day. 
and where I've had to empty the ashes once a week. I've got a metal bucket. I don't need to show you. It's not the highlight of this monologue. I'm emptying it every other day now, and I get up in the morning, I empty the ashes out of the wood stove, and I'm emptying live coals now. Uh, yeah, and I don't like that because uh, live coals in a metal bucket is not a problem, but it's this morning after I emptied and built the fire, and I went up in the loft to start working, I began as I got higher and higher and smelling. It's hot, you know, like fire hot. And I think that's the, the live coals I'm putting into the ash bucket. <laughs> My point is, there's so much fire in there all day long that overnight, when it would usually always be stone cold by morning, it's not anymore. It's all of the, the steel and metal, the cast iron is still warm and there's live fire left over. I do have a carbon monoxide alert up there, so I'm not worried. That will go off, and I know it's live because two weeks ago I heard a very piercing chirp. I thought, well, that's the soundtrack of the show I'm watching. And I thought, no, nah, it probably is just the soundtrack, but I'm going to rewind it, see what I hear. And yep, there was no chirp. So I, w I went up. We got three smoke alarms in this house. They're hardwired. I don't know if they have battery backups in them or not. I should check. Anyway, the carbon monoxide detector is one that you plug right into the wall. It has a battery backup. Well, that battery is was it's a year old, need, needed changing, so okay. So I feel protected with that. But have you noticed the weather people take a great deal of delight and more and more over the past five, ten years in telling us the wind chill values, not the air temperature. It's the wind chill, chill values that are always really uh, extreme, frightening, scary, dour, malevolent. And that's the kind of shrill BS that I, I don't like. I don't even pay attention to it. What does it matter when chill? None of us are outside when it's 20 below during the day and there's high winds or moderate winds and the wind chill is going to be 45 below and exposed skin will frostbite in 10 minutes. What's the point? Nobody needs to know what the wind chill is going to be or is at this very moment. What's the wind chill? We're all inside in heated places like this. The wind isn't blowing in through open windows, threatening our exposed skin. So why tell us what the wind chill is going to be? How many people are outside when it's a wind, when it's air temperature of 20 below? Who cares if it's going to be a 45 degree below zero wind chill? <laughs> Suki and I go out after dark every evening, give her a chance to pee and do her business if she needs to. We've sort of gotten a routine down now. For the last couple months, she's been pestering me to go outside, and she can't talk. She can't talk. The camera just shut itself off.
Get on. Go away. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like button. See you next time.